In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the coming cryptocurrency bear market, aka crash. Now, before anybody just dislikes this video because they don't want to hear anything negative about Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, let me just start by saying that right now, things are great. You know, they are incredible, in fact. If we take a look at a multi-year chart of Bitcoin, you'll notice that price has gone up incredibly high just over the past couple of years. In fact, Bitcoin is up over 2,000% just in the past two years alone. And because of that, I've had a lot of subscribers and students that have made six or seven figures in these market conditions, either investing or trading. And it's just been really, really incredible. And the total cryptocurrency market capitalization, basically the total value of all cryptocurrencies, has gone from, uh, in the same period of time, from a little bit less than $5 billion to over $150 billion. And this number is kind of deceiving because a lot of altcoins are really just have inflated market values. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth about that, but Right now, there's a ton of hype around cryptocurrency uh, with the general public. You know, mom and pop investors, people on CNBC are now pumping it, you know, and, and where people thought I was crazy when we were buying a couple years ago down here in the, the 200 range, um, everybody is now jumping on the cryptocurrency bandwagon. Again, from, you know, everybody from economists that have been trashing it for years to scammy internet marketers that are all of a sudden overnight cryptocurrency experts. Um, so right now we are in full, just buy the hype mentality, right? That's what everybody has been chasing for a while. Now let's just talk about some market truths. Okay. This is the reality, no matter what market we're talking about. And this absolutely applies to cryptocurrencies. The first market truth is I'll say all markets that make significant gains go through bear cycles, all markets, doesn't matter if it's real estate, stocks, currencies, or yes, even cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And just to give you case in point, if we take a look at the China bubble of 2013, which at the time, this was a massive, massive bubble. Uh, we went up from 100 to over 1,000, and then we had a one year, basically an entire year or a little more of a bear trend. Okay, so a bear trend, if you don't know basic kind of market uh terminology, a bear trend is where the market goes down, where a bull trend is where the market goes up. So this bear trend lasted for quite a while. And a lot of people in cryptocurrency like to call tops and, you know, call Bitcoin a bubble. But by now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that we talked about bubbles and how Bitcoin has been through about a half a dozen bubbles. And every time it recovers, it goes on to make new highs in price, right? So recently here in mid 2017, we made a high of about 4,500 hundred dollars us here's what happens emotional people get caught up in bull markets right they often buy the top and they lose money right this happened in real estate in the early 2000s and it has happened in crypto several times before and it will continue to happen in the future just because of human psychology you know whenever people look at a, a chart like this they just look and they feel the emotion of greed or fomo fear of missing out right and that is in part, has helped to drive price higher. Now, smart traders and investors understand market behavior, mass human psychology, and they profit because they know how to analyze risk, right? In fact, I was listening to a, a Tim Ferriss podcast today, and he was interviewing one of the top poker players in the world, and he, he even said that, you know, a less skilled poker player with good risk management will outperform a highly skilled poker player. And when it comes to the markets, when it comes to investing, when it comes to trading, whatever you consider your time frame or, or what you do, uh, even if you're brand new and you've never traded so much as a baseball card, if you want to make money in the markets, risk management is the most important thing. If you don't have good risk management, if you don't have good money management, then over time you are going to be a net loser. Okay. Let's talk about possibilities and probabilities. Okay. Um, th there's a few things that could happen in Bitcoin right now. The first thing is we could just keep going straight up forever. Right. And this is where a lot of people have gotten just enticed into this idea where they hear Jim Cramer on CNBC say that Bitcoin could go to half a million or whatever. They think that this is going to happen, right? Where price is just going to continue to shoot up, 
right? And it's just going to go forever. And that is a possibility, right? That is something that could happen. However, the probability or the likelihood of that happening where it just goes up forever without any kind of bear market is very, very low, okay? Another possibility is that the current trend will have a big pullback and then keep going. And we've seen this happen uh, several times before, where even as recently as last month, you know, I, I did a video talking about the news events. We had a significant pullback from the highs from 3000 down to 2000 or, or sub 2000. So we lost a third of its value in just a few weeks, right? But then look what happened right after that. We actually had a gain of over a hundred percent in less than a month. So just because the market does pullbacks doesn't mean that the trend is over, right? So this is, this is another thing that could happen that I think is obviously it's a possibility, but I think this is an even higher probability than it just going straight up forever. Now, the third possibility is that we get what's called a parabolic blow off. In other words, where the market does look like it's just going to keep going up forever and it speeds up relative to the prior trend. So basically we would get something that just shoots, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars in just a few days. And that kind of move is unsustainable, right? We've seen that several times. Like if we look at uh, one of the biggest crypto moves of all time that, you know, we got into strat at in between three and five cents and it had a high of eleven dollars and fifty cents. You know, here down here, you have a healthy trend. And then when it goes parabolic and it can't sustain that and it traps the people that have FOMO or chase the highs the most, those people end up upside down. Right. They buy at ten bucks and then they find themselves at five with 50 percent of their position gone. Right. That happens time and time again. So if you want to be a smart or a savvy trader or investor, it is a really good idea to think in terms of possibilities and probabilities, meaning what could the market do and what is the market most likely to do, right? And there's really two types of mindsets that you could have about this. The first, which I think is the wrong mindset, is to let your feelings of euphoria silence the downside risk. In other words, I'm sure somebody's sitting there going, shut up, Chris, Bitcoin is just going to keep going up forever, right? And, and you might have feelings of either fear where you're like, no, I don't want Bitcoin to go down or, you know, hope where you like, you're like, man, I, I'm really hoping that I'm just going to get rich and that Bitcoin's going to go to 10,000 without a slowdown, which again, that is a possibility. That is something that could happen. But I think the wrong mindset is just to let feelings of euphoria or hope or FOMO silence any downside risk, right? If you find yourself when you get into a trade or you get into investment, only thinking about the upside and completely ignoring the risk or the downside, that's where people get surprised by the markets and that's how people turn into bag holders, right? Like for example, there were a lot of people back here in 2014. And, and I know this for a fact because I heard from hundreds of them that said, you know, Chris, I bought up around eight, nine hundred or a thousand where, you know, and I found your blog post where you said we were likely close to a top. And then they actually ended up bag holding and then selling somewhere close to the bottom. Right? So instead of getting in that mindset where you let euphoria silence the downside risk, and then you end up buying high and selling low, the right mindset is to think about all of the possibilities and then analyze the risk, right? Ask yourself, how do I manage risk properly? So how do you get ready for a bear market? If we are going to have either a deep pullback in price or a sustained bear market that lasts for weeks, months, or years, wh what do you do, right? How do you prepare for that instead of just ignoring it? Because we know that's a bad idea, right? Well, we talked about this in a past video too, which you want to ask yourself, what would I do if this market fell by 90%, right? What that's going to do is get you thinking about the risk and thinking about where your average price is, right? So those of you that were buying Bitcoin with us a couple of years ago in the two, threes, 400 range, you obviously have le less risk on the table than say if you were buying above 3000 right? If you, if your average price is 3,500, you need to be thinking about risk 
and keeping tighter stops and, and think about, you know, profit taking more so than somebody who bought lower because their downside risk is less, right? Also, I would encourage everybody, if you want to be active in trading or investing, learn how to short and learn how to make money when the markets go down and then practice that. Because one thing that could happen, you know, if let's say we go into a year bear market where we start to get breakdowns, you could actually make even more money on the downside uh, than if you did nothing. Right. Um, and look, shorting is risky because if the market goes against you and you never close it, you could lose a significant amount of money. It's not something that I would encourage people do when price is going, you know, doubling month after month, right? You want to be smart about how you do that. But in the event that scenario three does play out and we go into a multi-month or more than a year bear market, that would be something that in instead of just bag holding and hoping that every pullback is going to rebound, if you understand how to actively profit off of those moves, not only would you not lose money, but you could actually make money. So shorting can be a good, good hedge against Bitcoin value loss. So basically let's say you own Bitcoin and then the price starts to pull back. You could hedge against those losses or you could actually use it to net profit and then stack more Bitcoin, which is what we did in 2014. My goal was because I believed in Bitcoin long term, you know, this looks like a small move now, but these this was actually a significant bear market for a full year. You know, our goal was to short and then grow value, accumulate Bitcoin when it's low, right? And then sell into strength, right? So as the market and as the hype is kicking in, this is actually the time that you want to be taking profit and scaling out. And I'll just show you a couple of other examples of how this works, right? So if we take a look, let's go to Poloniex and take a look at Ripple. This is one that, uh, case in point, you know, we were accumulating low and it went up several hundred percentage points in just a, a short period of time. And then I started getting a lot of messages from people saying, Chris, should I buy? Should I buy? And I'm like, um, I'm actually selling here. Uh, but, you know, this pattern plays out over and over again where basically you have a market that is low and cheap, right? So let, let's say this is price action and price is low and then you start to get an early trend, right? So the market starts to pick up and, you know, starts to trend a little bit. And then once the, once the general public starts to catch on and they see the headlines that are like ripples gain 200%, then they buy and the general public causes price to do something like that, where it just goes crazy and it doubles or triples or more in a real short period of time. And then once that rocket ship can't sustain its momentum anymore, oftentimes it comes down just as fast as it went up or faster. So mo most of the time, you know, the market takes the stairs up and the elevator down. And that's why on a lot of these boom bust cycles, you'll see a full retracement. And then once people give up, and that everybody bails, that's when you'll get the next cycle where it'll start to accumulate. You'll get another trend. And then again, the hype cycle will, will pick up. I mean, this stuff is so predictable and it happens over and over and over again in crypto. So just go back. If you look at even recently, you know, in the spring of this year, we had several uh, coins that have done this. You know, Ethereum was a big one um, where, you know, it was in the news headlines and we had an early breakout in March and then it went crazy and then it had a deep pullback, right? There are a lot of altcoins that are doing this right now. And um, I think, and, and I've always said this, I think 90% or more of altcoins are eventually going to go to zero. A lot of them are scams or like penny stocks and a lot of them eventually will become worthless but that doesn't mean you can't make money trading it in the meantime. That's actually our goal with trading, you know, some of the uh, smaller market cap altcoins is to trade to grow Bitcoin holdings and then take advantage of the bigger moves. So again, just to recap, ask, what would I do if this market fell by 90%? Learn how to short, practice that. And um, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment below.